Hello and welcome to How I Beat in association with William Hill. This episode, I am with Craig Spider Richards. Yes. I always want to ask you, is there any spider that comes to mind when you think spider? Black Widow. Black Widow. <laughs> oh, okay, I always wondered. I think that was a tarantula or, you know, tarantula little, or Black little, Widow. Little house do. spider. No, no, no. House spider. <laughs> so I'm a Black Widow minimum tarantula. <laughs> right. I've picked this opponent, okay? The How yeah. I Beat opponent, because I think it was, though very short, it yeah. was a masterclass in how to fight Southport. We're yeah. going back to 2019, February, I think it was. Yeah. Jake Ball. Yes. It was, I think, labelled as a 50-50 fight. A lot of people saying, you know, struggling to pick a winner. Two good fighters on the cuffs are really moving on to that next level. Yes. But it was a three-round destruction. Yes. Straight away, like I say, I was impressed with the way you approached the Southport. Is there anything in your head, when that bell, bell, bell goes, yeah. right, I'm fighting the Southport, I've got yeah. to do this. What is it? Well, you get the general um, conceptions, obviously keeping the left foot outside of his left foot, um, dominating with the and lead And just hand. quickly, for those, why would you want to do that? Why, why did people advise getting on the outside? People advise it because it takes away their strong hand, their back yeah. hand. They're a southpaw, I'm an orthodox. So if you're a southpaw, sorry, if you south, switch, sorry. you go there. Yeah. Now our lead hands are the same. Yeah. Both our back hands are our power yeah. hands. So that's your So I'm taking myself on the outside to cancel your power hand. Yeah. So... That's one of the things you're looking for straight away is the front foot. What I was so impressed with straight away in the first round, and this is something that people struggle with. But I've always found watching, I used to like fighting southpaw, yeah. but a lot of people when I watch an orthodox fight in the southpaw is they struggle to get their jab yeah. into play. Because like you said, look, you like this, if you're the southpaw, southpaw. you like this, aren't you? So you're yeah. sort of fencing a you're little bit. Yeah. Straight away, I was impressed with the way you was able to establish your jab in yeah. the first round. Yeah. How, why, why was that? Just the way you angle. Just the way I angled my body, I didn't literally, he's in line with me and rather than clashing over the arms, I'm just taking myself yeah. off the line and creating new angles and creating new lines to get my um, jab off and varying the jab variety up rather than having the same yeah. jab throwing the same dimension. That's the big thing, right? Variation. Variation, Vari yeah. It's not even like the long left hook as well that yeah. you was throwing. It's not just, people think of a jab just being that. Yeah. That is it. Yeah. There's so much more, isn't it? 100%. So, and that's what it was. I just used the variation of jabs to close the distance and get my timing in and off, obviously off the back of that then you can then bring your backhand into play and that backhand what a shot I mean yeah. I think it was the first round you dropped him yeah. with a straight right straight right hand, which yeah. is obviously the shot for a southpaw it goes yeah. straight down the middle the second round was it a body shot with the right body shots with the right hand yeah I and buzzed then, him to the head and then I <laughs> followed up and I went downstairs with the right to and the then body. the third yeah down the third round with right hand again right hand a screw jab to faint him just to bring him back Landed the right hand, buzzed him and dropped him again with the right hand. And is it all about, so you mentioned it there, with that right hand, how important is it to follow the jab or do you vary it? Is it about throwing it solo sometimes? Varying, the right hand or? varying because um, patterns can be readable. So if I'm going to throw the same shot, I might land it the first or second time. As a fighter, you're going to start reading it. So it's about varying it up. Might touch it with a jab, then throw it. Might throw the left hook, then throw off it. Might throw a screw jab, then the right hand off of it. So it's just varying. Or I might just throw it off with the cuff. So it's just about making you be unaware of the different um, variations I'm going to use of it. And like I say, the third round, you got the finish. Talk to me about how that fight ended. Was it was it right hand? It was got the ref jumped yeah. in, right? Yeah. So, Save ball from further damage. Yeah. So. I got him going with the right hand. Then I just started to stalk. Once he got up, after I Did dropped him. Did you know him, you had him at this point? I knew I had him at that point. I knew it was just, <laughs> how am I going to take him out? So I was just stalking him, stalking my prey. Landed a few right hands. Then once I realised he was buzzing, I saw his legs dip. I just went to just go for a complete finish. And that's when the ref obviously pushed me off to obviously stop further damage going on. And I guess you, it, certainly for that stage of your career, it was a breakthrough performance. You could see what it meant to jump on the, the ropes yeah. afterwards, the yeah. celebration would be. What did that win mean for you at that time? I mean, was there added pressure going into that fight, knowing yeah. that, you know, I this felt could go like either way? It was a hard fight. As he was getting a lot of knockouts, first round, second round. He was obviously the former GB boy. He was the big signing at Matchroom at the time. Um, so he was actually the favourite in all the bookies to win the fight. Um, I came up not too long ago before from super middleweight. He was a mm, big light heavyweight, yeah. so people were saying, oh, is he going to be big enough and strong enough to fight someone as powerful as Jake Ball? Also, at the time, Matchroom had six light heavyweights. I've just five light heavyweights, and I just joined, and I was the sixth light heavyweight. So I also knew it was going to be a process of elimination. I felt like if I didn't win this fight, my career would be in tatters. Mm. So I knew it was a must win. 
Well, that is how I beat. And it's also not just how I beat, it's a masterclass in fighting a Southpaw. Craig? Yes. Cheers. Thank you.